Hi, Psych Family. It's Monique again, and I am going to start reviewing our slides on late adulthood, but looking at chapter 18, which highlights physical develop, uh, psychosocial development. So, um, we spoke about some of these things during like middle adulthood or middle-aged, right? But a lot of it we're going to kind of highlight from a different perspective as someone who is getting even older and entering that late adulthood phase. So remember, um, even though it's a social construct, we're talking about 65 plus. So when we when we talk about this age group, we can have um, young late adults who are like 65, 70, right? And we can have older late adults who are like 85 plus, right? So just keep that in mind. At this point, people are tending to um, re-examine their lives. And what does that mean? Um, that means that they're, they're looking back and they're saying, okay, well, what did I do well? What did I really appreciate? What do I need to improve on? What, how do I want to focus my life, right? How do I want to spend the rest of my life? What, what, you know, they're, they're really examining themselves um, and start to, you know, they complete their unfinished business, whatever that might be. Um, it might be like, you know, making sure that all your ducks are in a row through like, a, a means of a will or it might mean calling up your cousin who you got into a fight with and saying hey listen I've been thinking about you lately I know we haven't spoken in 10 years but guess what I, I, I want to rekindle our relationship it could mean anything right one thing that's interesting that happens at this age is there is something called a gender crossover and so if we think about the typical or the stereotypical excuse me not typical um, gender roles right so like men are, are are super stoic they don't really express their emotions they're, they're strong they're tough they um, they have strong leadership skills all those things right they're driven right women are very compassionate they um, are, are, are caring they care about kids and nurturing motherly maternal all those things that we talk about um, very emotional sensitive right traditionally right there's this thing that happens in late adulthood where you'll see those those um, after like the reevaluation, you'll see a shift where women will become more like driven towards their goals and, and things like that. And men will start really kind of um, getting in on um, some of those emotional connections, some of those relationship connections that um, with like family and friends and, you know, highlighting things like that. Um. So, during this stage, according to Erickson, this is the last stage of life, and he calls it integrity versus despair, and he says that it results in, in wisdom. And what this is, is you look at your life and you say, okay, well, am I, am I happy or am I not, right? And um, you really kind of evaluate it, you go through it, you, you muddle through, do what you got to do, right? Um, and generally, most people are happy at this stage, most people are satisfied, um, but there is something, and we'll get into this when we talk about death and, and dying, but there is something called a terminal drop that we see. And this is a sharp decline in like cognitive as well as emotional function. And it occurs like usually three to five years before somebody passes away. And it's just kind of weird that it happens, but it does. Um, but like I said, most people are, are tend to be happy and, and satisfied with their well-being. Personality stability does like an inverted U shape. Um... So when we, and it's at its lowest during adolescence. So we think about like our personalities and we, we try and think of ourselves as people who are fairly consistent and stable in our personalities. Like we might have a period of growth or awakening or something like that, but we try and say, oh no, I'm consistent. I keep it real. I do this. I do that. Right. But realistically speaking, our personality, there is a, a little shift that occurs. Um, so if, if I don't have a graph in front of me, but if I was using my finger, so we would might maybe start off here, Right. Um, as little kids or whatever, go to adolescence. We're at our, our, our um, least stable part during adolescence. We know we got things going on, right? We spoke about that before. And then we go up, young adulthood, yay, middle adulthood, things are good. And then in, in older adulthood, things start to go down again, right? Um, so it's just a bit of instability. And I mean, we can talk about, and I spoke about this a little bit when I was talking about the stereotypes around um, elderly people and things like that, but um, we can think of it in terms of people getting older and, and understanding their mortality and that people around them who used to be around that made them happy throughout their whole lives have 
are, are gone, whether that means they passed away, that means they live in a different nursing home, whether that means they moved to be with family, whatever that means that those relationships have changed. Even like something as simple as like listening to the music, the music changes, right? Or um, being able to do certain things, losing certain aspects of your independence, like driving or, or things like that. Um, so these might have to do with like some of those instabilities that we see, right? When we talk about all people are moody, right? It might have something to do with it, right? Um, so a lot of older adults still do work, right? Remember when we talk about late adulthood, we're talking 65 plus, so it's, it's a range, right? So a lot of older adults still do work, um, providing financial stability and things like that is great. Um, but there are also other things like boredom that kicks up and, and things like that. Um, many adults live in different ways, right? So who do, who do these older adults live with? Well, how are they living, right? We, we always hear about like the residential homes and, and places like that, um, and institutionalized living. A lot of adults do live in those, in those, um, types of housing. Um, however, less than 50% of people who are living there report a good life. Okay, and whatever a good life means is, you know, it's subjective, so we don't necessarily know exactly what that means. Um, but there, you know, there is a, clearly an issue if less than 50% are saying that they, that life there is great. So um, there are probably some things that, you know, as, as a unit, we need to kind of work on. Um, there are other ways that older adults live, and one of those ways is in things like assisted living communities. And what those are, um, like my, my grandmother, she used to be in one when she had come home from the hospital. She used to live in like um, Mattapan on like um, third floor or something where it was like, it wasn't realistic for her to be up there right and doing all that by herself like it, it was a lot my grandfather had passed like um so what happened was my my um aunts and uncles and my mom they all put her in an assisted living community because she didn't want to live with anybody else she wanted her independence so it was essentially like an apartment complex almost but they had like a, um like a, a, a great room like a community room where people can come and do activities and things like that they had a schedule where if somebody wanted to do certain things whether it be like therapy or whatever they could do that they had interactions where they can interact with other um people because the interactions at this age are, are very important as we you know with all ages right social interactions are important um there was also a nurse on call 24 7 who was always in the building um but she had her own apartment and in that own apartment, like, you know how if you ever go to, like, um, an, a room for people with disabilities, there might be, like, in the shower, that, that red um, cord that you can pull the, the string with the little red um, thingy knob. And if you pull it, somebody will come help you up if you fall or something like that. So she had things like that that were there to clearly assist her. Um, another way that people live, oftentimes they will live with family. And women are, are most likely the, the family members, especially women in middle adulthood are, are the family members that usually will take on um, the, the challenge of keeping um, people in late adulthood, family members in late adulthood um, safe and, and taken care of and things like that. Um, but there are some barriers associated with it. So like um, the people in late adulthood, oftentimes they need to feel like they're contributing in some way right even if that's like um i'm teaching you guys how to you know take care of these kids by sewing their clothes or i'm teaching you guys how to make a new recipe or i am providing you guys with help from my ssi check financially whatever it is like you need to be able to you know contribute you don't just want to feel like somebody's taking care of you um as i mentioned social supports are super important and feeling useful is important um and in terms of marital status, I'm going to go through like the different family statuses that we highlight in your, your text and slides and all that. Um, so married life is good, but when you get married later on in life, like in middle, middle adulthood, um, there is a higher chance for some type of discord just because like you didn't get, according to your text, you didn't get um, that that foundation that might be needed when um taking care of somebody who is getting older um some something like that right 
Also, wid widowhood is common and associated with unexpected death. This might be due to like dying from like what's called a broken heart, like when one partner dies and the other one dies soon thereafter. Um, divorce often increases life expectancy at this age, and I'm not sure exactly what that's about, but I would assume it has to do with living in happiness, right? Um, because divorce, we know, takes a lot of work and a lot of, um, it takes a lot to get people to that point, right? Um, so probably chasing happiness. Um, and people who are single, who have always been single, tend to prefer single life. Um, and they're less likely to be lonely. They just prefer to, you know, be by themselves. They're able to navigate the world, have their social interactions, whatever. But in terms of a romantic relationship, they prefer to be single. Cohabitation rates are going up. Um, which makes sense because we know what society we live in, right? Um, and same-sex um, relationships, when we look at the generation that is now older, same-sex relationships have had a really, really tough time navigating and muddling through the world and things like that. So these relationships tend to be very resilient, very strong at this point, um, supportive of one another, and very diverse. Um, sibling relationships tend to last the longest, and sister relationships in particular are very strong. And I also want to take a sec to talk to you guys about elder abuse. Elder abuse can happen on many different levels, whether we're talking um, physical, sexual, financial, right? Even emotional, right? So um, just keep that in mind. Um, and as always, that wraps up the end of our, our, our um, late adulthood. Next, we're going to jump into death and bereavement. And um, if you guys need anything, please just reach out. Email, text, call, something. Just let me know, okay? All right. Have a good one. Bye, guys.